Hi, what we're going to do today is start up the steam plant on the M11 MAK ship. Um, where we're starting out is we have a plant where we have uh, an electric power system that we've already set up. So we have a diesel generator that is supplying power to the plant. We also have uh, control air systems that are operational. So I have a service air compressor that's operational, filling up my service air receiver and able to supply air to my control valves. Supporting that system as well, what I have is a cooling water system that's active for the air compressors and automatic uh, control on each of those compressors. So at this point what we have is our system is set up and we are able to get started at setting up our steam plant. So we have two pages that go along with the, our steam plant on the fired boiler side. So we have our steam generation plant page 80 and 83 our oil fired boiler. Let's take a look at 80. This page talks about the steam system. So the upper half of the screen is our steam. So we have a vent, safety relief valve, and then main steam lines, sending steam to different processes. Uh, we also have our water side. So we have water side inside of the boiler and our pathway to fill the boiler. Uh, if we look at the level inside of our boiler, right now we are low. So the negative sign, negative 262, means that our water level is below where we want to be. Our target would be zero. Uh, so let's fill up some water into the boiler before we get started. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my control valve and I'm going to turn on a pump. And we can see that the level is starting to rise. At some point uh, before I get to zero, I want to turn this guy off um, because I will tend to overshoot. Um, it takes a little bit of time for this guy to slow down its, its fill rate. My simulator is reacting very quickly. I have the speed going fairly quick. Um, so normally it takes a little bit of time for that level to increase. So I'm ready to go and start the boiler. Um, the only thing on this page before I leave is I just want to make sure I do have a vent open on the boiler as we'll need that during our startup. So in order to start up the boiler, uh, what I'm going to use is diesel oil uh, when it's first starting up. And so if we follow through our pathway for diesel oil, it starts from my service tank. So diesel oil service tank comes across up through to boiler, follow through my pathway to this tank where it then continues on. I want to switch over this valve so that I am returning any unused fuel into the diesel oil tank so I'm not wasting it. Um, and once I've set up that circulation pathway, I'll turn on my pump. And I just want to take note that I do have flow of that fuel. You'll notice an alarm just went off. What happened is my boiler just woke up, let's say. So the instrumentation became live and it just noticed that the pressure is low. So I'll acknowledge that. Uh, I know that the pressure is low as expected and that's our job right now is to raise the pressure. So in order to turn on the burner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Hit the start button on the burner. Goes through a purge cycle and then my main flame ignites. You can see the temperatures rising. Uh, I want to keep the flame at a fairly low uh, heat output during the startup. 
uh, what we don't want to do is thermally stress any of the components by heating them up quicker than any neighboring components. So I want to warm this thing up slowly as one large component as evenly as I can. So we're going to keep our heat output or our burner output, which is this value, down at a minimum fire level uh, or close to it for the startup. If you want to speed up time, you can do that by pushing F5 and you can adjust the simulation speed ratio. Um, you can see my clock is ticking away fairly quickly and my temperature is rising fairly quickly. Be careful if you're doing this as you can easily lose track of your, your plant and get things running away on you very quickly. So before I get too close, what I'm going to do is slow down time. And where we can see is that we're at about 100, our typical boiling point for water exposed to the atmosphere. And we are just starting to build a little bit of pressure inside the boiler. So what's happening is we are filling up this cavity with some steam. It's starting to displace the air that's inside and everything is coming out of the vent. So we're starting to get some flow out of the vent. And uh, what we're going to do is leave this guy open for a little while until we've we're confident that we've gotten rid of a lot of the air that's inside the boiler. At this point, a couple things that we're going to do. Um, now that we're up to pressure and we have a bit of time, um, we could start to get our pumps back on because we know we're going to need them. So you can turn on a feed water pump and switch over your level controller to automatic. And that should keep you stabilized around zero. If you are a long way off, uh, you might want to manually put water in first before you switch over to auto with your pump on. We're going to send some steam eventually up through our process steam lines to our plant and eventually to fuel oil service tanks. Rule of thumb that we use here is just we're going to wait till we have a bar of pressure that we've built up before we close our vent. So once we get to one, uh, that's when I'm going to close my vent. Before I go and start some other process lines, uh, potentially inside the plant, I'm not quite safe to walk away from this boiler at this point. Uh, what we've left it in is the burner controls in manual. What that means is that nothing's going to decide to turn off this burner if there's a problem. It's only us that's allowed to make that decision right now. So we're going to switch our burner over into automatic mode. What that means is that if the burner itself senses that there's too high a pressure inside the boiler, uh, it's going to make the decision to turn itself off. So we've relinquished control of the starting and stopping of the, the burner to this device um, as, a, as a safety precaution. So let's start sending steam to the rest of our plant. So if we go to page 80, what we're going to do is we're going to send steam up through the main steam stop valve, through to our process steam. And then what we have is steam that's coming up and we'll send it to our diesel oil and HFO service tanks. That process for opening up steam lines and sending it to processes in real life would take uh, 
a, a bit of time in order to warm up steam lines and properly prepare those systems. Uh, and we'll talk about that later on in the course once we switch over to the MC90, which is our next ship that we'll talk about with a little more detailed steam plant. Uh, one more thing that we're going to do now that we have our steam going off to process is uh, return back to our burner page and we'll set our pressure controller over to auto. What this is going to do is it's going to adjust the firing rate of the boiler in order to bring our pressure up to our, our uh, desired pressure of 6 bar. For our scenario, what we want to get to is auto and auto at the end. Um, in real life, what we would likely do is manually adjust our pressure controller so that we would bring that pressure up manually, still trying to do it at a slow rate. And then once we got close, switch it over into an auto firing mode. Before we walk away, we just want to make sure everything is in auto. So number one priority is going to be this guy in auto. He's going to be able to turn off the burner if we have a problem. Our second priority is going to be our level controller and pump are active. So we don't want to have a case where we have too high or too low of water level. And then our third priority would be that our pressure controller is in auto. At this point, we can move on to using our steam in other places. So if we want it to send steam to other processes or other functions inside of the plant, then we could start to get those systems started.